Hey everyone, welcome to the old workshop breakdown. Uh, after posting this, I got quite a few um, messages, emails asking about specifically about the lighting uh, of this scene. So because I decided to upload the scene uh, for, for sale for some of you guys to be able to, you know, pick it up, tear it apart, see uh, what I did to get to the end results. I also wanted to create a quick uh, video uh, breakdown of uh, what exactly you're going to get if you decide to buy it, um, how I am just, you know, went about uh, the lighting and, uh, you know, what comes out of Maya versus what's the final image and, you know, what exactly is done in, in post-production. So this is the final render uh, that we are looking at at the moment. And this is the, the 4K um, resolution version. So you can see there's uh, quite a bit of detail uh, all over the place. And um, first of all, I'm going to cover what's in the package and then we're going to go over um, what, um, you know, what I did uh, to get this lighting to look like this. So if I open up, you're going to get um, the folder called the old workshop and it's a standard Maya project file. And that's because um, I'm using relative paths for my textures. So when you open the scene, if you set your project, you will be able to, um, you know, open up and everything will load for you. You don't have to worry about anything. So in the scenes files, you're going to get uh, two um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you're going to get two Maya files, which is the old workshops clean scene, which is everything is named um, uh, and organized properly. And we're going to look at that in a second. And one is all the pieces that make up this, uh, oh, sorry, all the pieces that make up this scene, um, uh, you know, aligned on the grid uh, for, you know, future use of if you want to pick up any of these tools, use it in your own scene. You don't have to worry about crazy rotations and scales. So it's all, you know, aligned for you. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go to the images folder right now of that directory. And here I'm going to provide you with all of the, the high resolution renders um, and the lighting and the breakdowns. Um, so and um, I don't think I have all the cameras for these close-up renders because I don't think I saved them. I, I was kind of playing around with the cameras to get this kind of effect. And uh, whenever I, I wanted um, you know, a specific angle, I would just render that image. And um, it, it's probably not <laughs> the best idea to not save them. But uh, yeah, uh, in, the, in the last version of the file, I, I didn't um, have all the images. I think I have only a few of them. So I decided there's no point including them because you're probably not going to want to recreate these close-ups anyway. Um, so this is the, the breakdown. This is the, the second Maya file, which it has everything aligned, you know, in orderly fashion. Everything is grouped and named and, you know, all that with the textures and everything. So it's ready to pick it up and, and drag and drop into your scene and it's going to work you know, right out of the box. Uh, one thing to mention, this is my 2018 and up. Um, the models, you can, uh, you know, of course, open in any version. You can export OBJ, FBX, transfer between softwares. Uh, but the shaders are Maya Arnold uh, sh uh, shaders, Arnold 5 um, and up. So just, just bear that in mind uh, when you um, you know, if, when you want to use them, like if you want to use them for V-Ray, you can have to convert the, um, the texture, well, not the textures, but the, the shaders. So it would be a matter of dropping a V-Ray material and just reconnecting everything and swapping the roughness um, with the reverse note to become a glossiness or, you know, small tweaks like that to, to kind of get to the exact same result. But it's, but it, it is very um, easily, easily done. So I'm going to open up the Maya file now. So this is the final version of the scene. Um, and I'm going to go to the perspective view at the moment. Uh, so right off the bat, you're going to see it's a, it's a very, very uh, simple 
scene, uh, I have a geo group that contains all the geometry and I have a light rig group um, that contains all the lights and I have a locator and the locator is um, something that I do to kind of determine how far is my focal point of the camera that I want the, uh, the, the depth of field to be. Uh, I usually render whenever I can with depth of field on, like a real depth of field, not, not doing it in post. Uh, so if I go to, let's hit render camera and I want the statue to be in focus, I'm gonna kind of move my locator around um, to a specific place, let's say if I wanna focus on on the head. And here, distance from camera, uh, you're gonna see right here, it says 78. So I would type that number into my camera. If I go to view, select camera, um, render settings. And if I go to Arnold, you see I have depth of field enabled and it's set to 79. So I was using this one. So this was set, this is 78, probably pushing it slightly to go to 79. So right at the moment, if I render, the statue would be in focus. Uh, and let's say I want to see how it would look like if, if we do a rack defocus effect, like in an animation or something like that. So I would move this one or even animate it here and pick up and see what's the, uh, the distance from camera over there and then I can animate that uh, depth of field parameter to have a shift of, um, the, of the, the focus of the depth of field. So at the moment I believe we are running a 4k yeah it's a 4k resolution but for the test I'm going to drop this down to uh, 1080p but I have maintained width and height ratio turned on which means I can freely go to you know any resolution and um, when in the width and the height will update itself uh, so you don't have to worry um, about you know messing up your resolution uh, if you want to go 4k you can just type 1496 that will be calculated for you and it would be all good to go and I would start the render and that will probably jump to the other monitor um, and so every time we do this um, um, Arnold will translate the scene and then uh, it will start the render process which at the moment is happening on the other screen and come on there it is so as soon as the, the scene is translated uh, the render process will start and you're gonna see this and if you compare this to this you're gonna be like, wait, 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 wait a minute. This lighting is completely different. And funny story, it's not. It, this this look was created in post. So what I like to do when I'm lighting is I would like to light my scenes as flat as possible. I'm, what I'm trying to mimic is when you're taking a photograph with a camera, um, you're gonna you're gonna try to do it like the flattest way possible uh, with no uh, color corrections with no filters and nothing enabled in your DSLR you're gonna try to take it raw to be able to have you know as much data as possible and the lighting to be you know as flat as possible and that way when you go in post you have um, a lot of creative freedom when it comes to color grading and you can do infinite variations of the exact same photo so as you can see, this one is you know is cooking already, but I'm gonna stop it because I already have the final render of this. I just wanted to show you you know what um, what it takes. So if I go to the render settings, I have six AA samples, and that's because I'm using um, in-camera depth of field. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think for the final render, I even went to eight to be able to get a clean result um, because. The problem with uh, depth of field in Arnold is the only way to control the quality is to uh, bump up the AA samples. And um, so just keep that in mind if you wanna uh, do tests with your scene and if you're getting noise in your in your renders, you have to probably go up to eight um, or maybe even more, <clears throat> excuse me, to get you know clean, clean depth of field effect. 
Uh, I do have some AOVs turned on, which will render automatically. So it's, as soon as I, I start the render with the Arnold render view, not the Maya render view, uh, in, in here in this drop down, you're gonna see all the all the renders that I that I output, and these are used for compositing. This is the volumetric, the specular, the SSS, and all that kind of stuff. So. One thing to note about the Z passes in Arnold, you won't be able to see the Z depth. Well, you can, but not by default. <clears throat> um, Maya render view and Arnold render view, they work. Uh, they do uh, make a sRGB conversion because Arnold is calculating everything linearly. And then uh, behind the hood, uh, using the, the, the color space, um, this thing here, um, it will convert everything to um, sRGB for your monitors because 99.9% .9 of the monitors that traditional, you know, people, you know, use, um, they are um, sRGB monitors. So in order to view this, you're going to have to play around with the exposure uh, parameter. So if you start dropping this down, way way down things like minus 10 there you are so there there's your z depth pass so it is there it's all informations are there so what you what you're gonna do is um and we're gonna see this when we go to photoshop is you're gonna drop a exposure note over the the z depth pass you're gonna crank it all the way down to like minus 10 minus 12 uh, 12 or something like that uh, and that is going to be your Z depth pass. If you are using Nuke instead of Photoshop, you don't have to do that because Nuke handles this very, very well. But I, <clears throat> for this image, I use Photoshop for compositing. So um, just just something to be aware of. So I'm going to bring all the way that all the way to zero, and then I'm going to switch to the beauty pass. So now let's look at the lighting. The lighting for this was actually very, very simple. Um, I have this brownish, um, you know, looking plane, uh, which is like below the scene. And that is to block some of these, um, colors, uh, one thing. And second is to bounce some of, um, just a flat brown color into the scene, just to give it a little bit more warmth. Um, so I am using an HDRI map, which is free from hdriheaven.com and it's the artist workshop um, and I am using the 4k version I think you can get up to 16k um, it, you know they're all free on on this website uh, but for this because I have other lights this is serving me as um, uh, more or less as a fill light uh, in the scene so the main um, light that is coming from the side that's mimicking like a, like a window light is this big uh, area light and with that one I I have volumetric disabled and the reason for that is because I have this spotlight which I use exactly for that so if I go to the Arnold um, tab I have the volumetric on this crank tab to, to 2 and then I have uh, a barn door, a gobo, and a light blocker. Uh, and the way you can do that is you can just go add and you can pick any of these filters you want to add. So if I go to the gobo effect, I'm using an image of a tree uh, that I painted in Photoshop. So this is just a, 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 you know, a bark with some branches that I'm using as an image uh, and, and, and pump that into the into the GPU, uh, to the GPU. I'm, I'm reading GPU here, and uh, uh, it's pumped into the Gobo effect. And uh, what that's giving me is, when we render, I get these nice shadows. Um, it's the simulating that is more outside of the scene that actually is. And it's a really uh, cool way of, um, you know, making your scene to appear to be bigger than it actually is. Um, and then. I'm going to minimize this again. If I go back, nope, select the light. 
Uh, the barn doors effect, just to give a little bit of a clipping, the barn door, imagine that is um, as if you have a four uh, planes that are positioned or like a, imagine like it as if the light is looking through a cube um, and that is like clipping the edges. So the light is not round anymore, but it's kind of like a squarish and with uh, some of the effects of the barn doors from the top side, bottom, left, right, all of these, they are adjusted um, to, to have the amount of, of flattening, so to speak, of that round disc that is being projected. Um, in the scene and that is because when I didn't have this some of these uh, branches were going um, You know in places where I didn't want them. So with this barn door effect, which I should name properly <laughs> um, That will be cleaned for the final version <laughs> um, so For this uh, I use the barn doors effect to kind of a block where I do not want those shadows and this light to to be um, affected and then the last one is the light blocker and then the light blocker is because when you see this the flash figurine over here was getting um, too bright so with this light blocker does is um, I can position it over any object and then with the density slider I can tell that I want whatever is inside this volume to be less um, affected by that light and I have few of them so for this spotlight for example uh, which is the, the you know the final light I have two light blockers enabled and that is because um, I want uh, like I wanted to kind of play around with light and shadow pretty much with this character so when I was lighting th this is like the key light for only for the statue because that's like the central point of the statue so um, yeah I, I kind of wanted to play around with the with the light and, and, and shadow so some of these areas were getting very very strong uh, you know specular highlights and it was like blowing out too much um, so I kind of added these light blockers and I'm, I'm you know, toning down the light, uh, specifically and, you know, some like on the head is like very, very tiny. And then on the arm, because the arm is being affected by the big spotlight and the small spotlight. And it was getting in, in that silhouette was burning. It was like almost pure white. So with this, you know, that's why this light blocker has, you know, a lot stronger effect because I wanted to be able to read the silhouette of, of the character. Um, so that's pretty much the lighting. Uh, what I can do right now is I can open up the light group. I can hide this light so we can look at the render one light at a time just to kind of see what, sh what each one does. So if I start the render, this is just the HDRI light. And one thing to um, you know to kind of notice is the more you try to mimic realism, the more simple you're gonna go with your lighting. Like uh, except for the statue here, which um, has a, a very you know bright shader, most of these objects already look pretty realistic just with an HDRI light. Um, this is um, using the depth of field, but it like if this was a room that was perfectly clean, there was like no dust in the air and nothing like that, you would be able to get away with pretty much just an HDR light. And just by rotating the light uh, and kind of getting where the you know the sun comes from and, and all that kind of stuff, you can simulate um, you know. 90% of the scenarios uh, you need. I start adding lights because I want to stylize the render in one direction or another. It could be to tell a story, it could be to convey a specific mood, you know, yada yada, yada. doesn't matter. The point is, the reality is much more boring that we have envisioned. Like, if you see something uh, in a film, and if you see the same, uh, you know, set, in real life they look completely different and that's because the guys in the film spend a bunch of money <laughs> and time color grading 
balancing each color to work perfectly with each other uh, uh, and, and to also work for that scene uh, that they're shooting in that specific set. So, um, the, you know, my point is, you know, you don't feel the need to add a, a bunch of lights just because you see people add a bunch of lights. Like, you can add lights if you need them, but, you know, the more lights you add, the more you're gonna you have to kind of think about like where they should should be and how they will affect the final render, right? So this is just an HDRI. Right? I'm gonna stop the render now. Um, I'm gonna turn on the main side light now, which is the area light. And that's gonna bring a lot of that warmth coming from this side, and you can see that's gonna you know, start to bring out the silhouette uh, of the object. It's gonna start to give a little bit more shadow. And like I, I'm keeping the shadows on this light very soft and I'm keeping this light um, moderately intense because I want the intensities from this light and the spotlight to combine and to look like there is, it, it, it's, kind of, it's like one light, right? So this light is, you know, brightening the image overall it's adding a bit more uh, warmth um, and then I'm going to add the fog light that has, you know, all the effects that we looked at and that's going to make a big difference. So that one is fairly bright and the reason it's fairly bright is because most of the light is masked off. So where you see that light is where in that black and white image, um, whatever there is white. So all of these branches are blocking the light. Um, and, you know, these um, areas here uh, going through the gobo is what you see um, in the final render. And then you see as a statue here is like a little bit dull and I want it to, be, to, hit, to have a little bit more focus on it. So I'm gonna enable that light and then immediately just adds a little bit of like a spot, like a very soft, spotlight um, on the statue but all, but again I'm trying to light this just so you know just enough so that I have a lot of contrast and uh, uh, not sorry not a contrast like a, a lot of information but not a lot of contrast because I want this to look as flat as possible and we're gonna see why in, in this next step so we're gonna open up the final render um, so if I go here, I'm going to drag this render in Photoshop. I'm using EXR.io, which is a free plugin for Photoshop for opening, uh, multi-layered EXR files. So, um, without that, you won't be able to open multi-layered EXR in Photoshop. So if, when you open this, it's going to be pure white and you're going to be like, what? <laughs> Don't worry, that's, that's just the alpha, which is like the first channel for some reason. I delete that, I don't need that. So this is the final render we get, right? Right out of Maya. And then these are all the render passes that we looked into um, uh, Arnold, into the, the Arnold render view. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go to image mode, and you're gonna see that this is a 32-bit EXR. Now, for the color correction that I'm gonna that I want to use, I have to switch this to 16-bit. So I'm gonna click Don't Merge because I want to keep my layers. And then I'm gonna go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. I love using the Camera Raw Filter because it's it's a very nice photographic way of editing your renders. It almost feels like editing a photograph from a raw. Uh, like a raw photograph from a DSLR camera. So here you can play with your with your temperature if you want, you know, to make it uh, warmer, colder. You can tint your image one way or another, you know, exposure. You can add a lot of contrast. You can, you know, bump up some of the highlights. You can darken some of the shadows, darken the blacks maybe, you know, and immediately this, just by doing this, like this, it changes the, the feel of the scene dramatically and you have something called clarity which is pretty much a sharpen filter so use this with with caution just just punch it out a little bit and especially in the ground here 
um, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna really overdrive this so you're gonna see all the details start to pop just be careful how much you use this because it can and it will make your renders look very very you know artificial looking um, and then you can have some saturation some variance um, and all of these buttons here they are tabs with specific type of color corrections and effects so if you go um, into this one like you can see you can play around only with the highlights so I can boost the highlights I can crunch the darks I can lift some of the shadows to get some atmosphere maybe and like I'm not I don't want to go through each of these but yeah like uh, color balance and saturation and lens correction and vignetting if you want to add like a vignetting to your image and like lens distortion and stuff like that and uh, at the very end you have some presets which are LUTs um, from you know uh, different cameras um, like, like some people save them so they have you know I don't really use them like I, I maybe would go and use them to kind of get inspired like what can be done but I really wanna you know color correct my own so let's say this is a the color correction that I want for this image and what I can do is I can click this and I can click save settings and when I do that it's gonna tell me you want to save all of this I'm gonna click save I don't want to do that because this is not the final color, color correction but I am providing you with the, the two LUTs that I that I created I have two looks for the scene uh, the one that I went for in the way that I didn't went for but I still like um, so I'm giving those of you with um, uh, with the scene so if I go load settings you get these two guys uh, so and I have a lighting one and that's for the for the grayscale renders so this is the original one that I went with so this is what you get um, when you load so so I'm gonna click okay so if I go back and redo you're gonna see the difference is dramatic right so then I take this image and I put it in this uh, comp file and I add this is a, the entire comp so it's not complicated it's just adding little bits and pieces to make things look more believable so I'm gonna turn that off I'm gonna turn all of these off and just to see like what so this is what's coming from the camera raw filter and in the final render believe it or not I forgot to include the logo render so I did another render with just the logo um, and uh, I am just adding it on top so that's why these bunch of layers here for for no particular good reason so then I have the the gobos um, a little bit uh, you know enhanced so what I have is literally a levels effect and in the levels I'm just brightening up the entire image and then I'm using mask uh, like a black mask to turn everything off and then using a, a soft brush I'm going over these and I'm painting to kind of give them a little bit of a glow around them uh, like a little bit like a light feel and also pop them a little bit more so that's literally what that is doing uh, then I have just an, this is so subtle I don't even know if the recording is gonna pick it up but this is like very very soft um, uh, atmosphere effect and what I'm using for this is very interesting like if I uh, alt click on this is this is I believe the red channel so I'm taking the red channel so I'm going here channels and I'm taking either the red or the blue I'm not sure th no actually it's the blue one so I'm taking the blue channel copying that pasting it into the mask over here and then color correcting it to be very 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 crunchy so this is all going to be affected and none of this will be affected right uh, because it's a mask so and I'm using like this very dusty 
uh, looking color. So and, and the intensity of that is very, very low. I just wanted to f like you need these kind of effects are you need to feel them, not see them, because if you see them, it's already too much. Right. So then I'm taking the volumetric pass uh, from here. So I'm taking this guy. So if you notice in the final render coming from Maya, I kept the volume very, very minimal. I want it to be there because I want it to translate into the volume pass, but I do not want to overdrive everything because when doing the color correction, I don't want to fight with the volume metrics. I want to get my colors established and then I can add um, the volume metrics to the level I, I want them. So then when I add this, it, it, you see it, how much it helps. So this is just the literal the volumetric pass added um, on a linear dodge add on 70%. No, nothing fancy about it. And then on top of that, I, uh, this is so subtle that you can't even see it, but see these little spots? So they are linked to the volumetric pass. So they are literally, I took like a black, um, you know, black uh, layer and I painted some white spots uh, and then I'm, I'm light linking them to the light linking them. I'm linking the layer um, of the volume of those spots to the volumetric. So they only show in, in the volumetric, which because that's where usually dust specs um, usually show. And I have a couple of passes of these that we're going to see. So and then I have some of them who are like maybe drifting away from, you know, the main burst of ray coming through. So I have these two passes. And if I zoom on this spec over here, hopefully you will be able to see something with the compression of the video. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I don't want to sound poetic, but um, you need to feel it, not see it. Uh, and then I'm adding a bright brightness and contrast because that volumetric was flattening the image a little bit too much. So in this brightness and contrast, um, effect, I'm literally just, you know, punching it just the slightest bit. And then, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm all constantly looking at the image and I'm like, where does my eye go? Like, can I focus on one thing? And after that thing, like, where do I go? Um, so, and then I keep adding this kind of stuff. Like I added just a black and white image, which is like, um, uh, a color lookup. So this is something that comes with Photoshop and you can access this by clicking here. Uh, and where is color lookup? Color lookup. So if you click here, you get presets of uh, LUTs coming from cameras, like uh, specific cameras and some, you know, presets saved by somebody. I really like the Fuji ones. So what I did is I um, created a lookup and then I in the mask uh, so if I disable if I disable the mask you can see the color lookup is crunching everything it's making very very contrasty which might be something you know you guys like but this is losing a lot of the atmosphere that I worked so hard to get so then I have this mask which is disabling it just around here so that when you look at here when you look at the statue everything around it is a little bit more punchy so your eye kind of stays uh, in this area right so then I have dust particles around statue uh, and they are like still <laughs> one of those barely visible ones, just few more floating bits of of white specks painted on a, on a black background floating around. Um, and then the statue was becoming a little bit too saturated for me. So you can see here, it's a little bit, it's a little bit too yellow, just, just a touch too yellow. Like I, like I said, color correction, is all about balancing your colors uh, and making them look, um, you know, believable and, and making them work with each other. So I'm just using a hue saturation, just dropping that to minus 13. And I have a mask that I painted. Actually, I didn't even paint that mask. I stole that. 
if I go here into the into the um, ID pass, uh, I can just pretty much click and it's going to give me a perfect mask, which I can copy um, to this the document and paste it into the mask. So this is how I desaturated that. And then I found an, a photo of a lens flare with a ring uh, from the internet. And I added that it's very subtle. It's like 40% visible and it's set on the screen. Um, but it, it does add a little bit of more um, photographic effect. Uh, one thing that I always try to do with my renders is to decide like what is or who is looking at, at this subject. Is it a person or is it a camera? Because a person viewing this object would um, would see it a lot differently than a camera will. The camera has anomalies like chromatic aberration and stuff like that that human eye don't have. So if you you know if your story is that somebody just broke in here and trying to steal something and it's a human point of view kind of render there's no like real reason putting like chromatic aberration and even lens flares although they do kind of happen in real life they're like in extreme like conditions so you wouldn't put like stuff like that or like film grain and stuff like that because we see like if you're if you don't have like i you know, eye disease condition, like you don't see film grain in real life. So, you know, just, you know, thinking of like, what am, am I trying to convey with this, with this render and just adding stuff um, to, you know, kind of push the, the raw render into the more, you know, direction that I want uh, the final image to be. Uh, again, uh, darkening the corner because this was getting a little bit too bright and I'm like, well, there's nothing interesting here. This wire here is, is like very bright because it's like a almost brand new copper and it's, you know, it's picking up a lot of highlights. So I don't want you to look at there for, for too long. So I'm kind of darken that up a little bit and kind of plays well with the, with the shadows. Like maybe the light is falling off and there's like, uh, you know, not a lot of light um, coming because, you know, some of the shadows are getting like more intense in this area. And then, uh, you know, I was quite happy with like with this kind of look. And then I kind of left it alone for, for a while. And then I, I looked it up like a, a day or two after. And, I, and like, I felt that like everything kind of has the same tonal value, especially like in the middle. So I don't really have a focal point intensity wise, except for like maybe these cans over here, which they shouldn't be. Um, so what I did is I added a just like a normal um, layer with a with a yellowy um, dusty color, and I set that to overlay. And I have a mask that is kind of like blocking it. So it's basically I'm trying to enhance. I'm telling you, hey viewer, look at here. This is the important part of the image. Um, and then all of these effects are going to be very subtle, like this one, you can't even see it. It's like more dust float, like floaty bits here and there. And then this one is an overall atmosphere boost. So if I zoom in, see, just, just becoming a little bit more hazy. And all that is, is, uh, um, the Z depth pass set to 6%, um, opacity and then the final grade is like I was like okay I'm happy with this can I push this even further than this or is this enough so uh, at the end, very end I try to do that as like as soon as I'm happy I'm like okay non-biased thinking is this good enough like really good enough or can I even can I improve something and then I added this um, uh, levels effect uh, and it kind of brought everything together because this overall atmosphere boost was very nice, uh, you know, around here, but it was also flattening some of these areas. And if you remember, I particularly darkened this because I want it to be kind of focal and I kind of lost that a little bit and also this a little bit. So I kind of um, went back with levels to kind of crunch the things just a touch. 
uh, just so it brings um, your, you know, the focus of the image to the beast guy. So you know, at, at the very end, like you can you can argue that um, you know the the render that we did with just the HDR light looks more realistic than this one, and you wouldn't probably be wrong, but in cinematography and in, in illustration it's not it's not always about making it you know pixel perfect for the real it's about conveying a story and conveying a mood and that's what i tried to do with this one like that with all my renders uh, i don't i don't always try to go for pixel perfect because you have a photo for it like take take your camera and snap snap a photo and, <laughs> and call it done right so there you go guys that's how you would recreate the render um, if you want to you know practice and, and maybe do something similar uh, just wanted to do this video to kind of avoid any surprises of you know people getting you know shocked why the final render doesn't look like the the, um, the final image um, and uh, yeah so I'm gonna post this video on my my split polygon uh, YouTube channel and uh, <clears throat> probably this scene is gonna be available in a few you know online stores like flip normals art station uh, probably my gum road as well so yeah feel free to pick it up uh feel free to leave some comments and um i hope you it was at least useful watching this if you don't if you don't decide to buy the scene it's all good um yeah see you guys in the next project thank you very much for your time